30, so I got time. I want to do a three-part series starting today on something that I think every believer ought to know, and it is about Jesus. There used to be a song I remember singing as a kid. Everybody ought to know, everybody. You ever heard that song? Who Jesus is. I think everybody ought to know who Jesus is. John 14, 6. And let me share with you as we're getting the scripture ready. John, one of the beloved disciples, he remembers this conversation as Jesus was preparing to go to the grave. He remembers being asked to Jesus, how will we know the way? We don't know where you're going. How are we going to get there? And Jesus responds in 14.6 by saying simply, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let's take a quick look at 14.6. Jesus said to him, to Thomas, who was doubting, I'm glad there's no Thomas in here. No one doubts. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yo soy el camino, la verdad, y la vida. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And he says, no one, I believe we may have someone from Colombia watching, no persona, no one can come to the Father except through me. There's no back door. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day of life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. For you had promised us where two or more would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst of us. We invite you, Lord, to be with us. We invite you, Lord, to touch our hearts, touch our minds. We invite you, Lord, to allow your presence to be felt, allow your peace to fall upon us. Open our hearts, God, to receive your word. Some receive one portion, some may receive another portion. But God, allow your word to touch the hearts of your people. Encourage them, Father. Strengthen them, Lord. We pray, God, that you would even use your word to rebuke the devil, God. Set us free, God. Set our minds and hearts free that we could serve you more, God. That we could love you even more. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep the way, the way, the way. No man in the history of the world ever said that he himself is the way. The way, it's a method, it's defined as a method, a style, or manner of doing something. It's also defined as a road, a track, a path, or a street for traveling along. It's also defined as parts into which something divides or is divided. A method, style, or manner of doing something. Jesus gave examples of his way in three areas. His walk. What Jesus did. His walk. What Jesus did. He had compassion on repented sinners. I better say amen on that myself. Amen, amen John. Amen. He had compassion on repented sinners. Let me sidebar for a second. Here's where I get myself in trouble. And John is not here to walk me to my car, so. 
I, I got Caleb. He's my bodyguard. He got me. Caleb got me. Someone said to me the other day that Jesus dined at the house of sinners. I said, could you show me that scripture? Because I, I seem to miss that one. I believe he dined at the house of repented sinners. Young folks told me one time, I said, don't, don't get it twisted. It's easy to get it twisted. <laughs> what Jesus did, he performed miracles. He did the Father's will. He washed his dirty, nasty feet of the disciples. Amen. Feet probably smell like corn chips and... <laughs> toe jam and everything, but he washed their feet. <laughs> they didn't have peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> he supplied joy at a boring wedding. Amen. That was some good wine. Yeah. That was little Don Perignon there because the man said, Usually people wait until the end. But you brought the good stuff out now. Jesus upset church folks. I've told you many times there's a difference between church folks and believers. There's a difference. Tell somebody, thank God I'm not a church folk. Church folks do what church folks do. Believers love God. Excuse my expression, but I might say it this way. Come hell or high water. Church, church folks, they run. Believers, they clean. Yes. Amen. He inspired people to believe again. They had lost faith in the church, but he inspired people to believe again. He's a priest, a king, and a prophet. A lamb who kept himself unblemished so that he could be a pure sacrifice for us unto the Father. That's what Jesus did. His words, his words. What Jesus said, his words. He spoke of his Father. He spoke of heaven. He spoke of hell. He spoke of Holy Spirit. He spoke of eternal life. He spoke of fulfilling the law. He spoke of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he spoke of life, he spoke of healing, and he spoke of the future. His voice calmed angry seas and stilled strong winds. This don't apply to anybody in here, but church folks, they cause angry seas and shoot a lot of wind. His voice raised the dead. His voice made sinners realize that God loved them. His voice made demons fear. He spoke life. He spoke love. He spoke grace. He spoke hope. He spoke of his Father. He spoke of Holy Spirit. He spoke of joy and peace. Watch this. When you know his words... Then you hear his voice. Yes. Amen. You can expect the peace of his presence that's going to come to your soul and remind you that you are his. His words. His walk, his words, and his will. Jesus' life was not my will, but thine will be done. Church folks, they're all about themselves. Jesus was committed to the cause. He endured afflictions. He was obedient, submissive. He attracted others towards himself, humbled. He had a servanthood spirit. He was able to lead from ability to follow. His will to surrender himself 
and to choose imperfect people to be useful in the plan. When your will is willing to will the will of God, then you will become a purpose for the kingdom. When you surrender yourself, you can become on purpose for the kingdom. Now, I, I, I want to, I may get some trouble here a little bit. I know there's some Bible scholars in here, but I want to mess with you a little bit. That Christians were called followers of the way at first. They weren't called Christians. They were called people of the way. The way. Let me give you some addresses here so that you'll know that I'm not lying to you. Acts 9, 1, 2. Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Acts 19, 9. But when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way, before the people, he withdrew from them and took away the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Acts 22, 4. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and putting both men and women into prisons. Acts 24, 14. But this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law. And that is written in the prophets. 24, 22. But Felix, having a more exact knowledge about the way, put them off, saying, When Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will decide your case. <clears throat> Acts 19, 23. About that time, there occurred no small disturbance concerning the way. Before we were called Christians, we were called people of the way. Amen. The way of Jesus. Because they... We're acting like Jesus. Amen. They were acting like the way Jesus did. My question here is, which way are you going? Right. Your walk, your words, and your will. Is it prepared to be seen as the way for others? Are you a beacon light of hope to others? That they can see their way? Can people look at these three attributes of your life and say, I want to follow your way? Or is your life's attributes of walk, words, and will blocking someone's way to Jesus? Listen to what people said about Jesus while he was alive. Luke 24, 32. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us? on the road and while he opened the scripture to us? Are people happy to see you enter or happier when you exit? <clears throat> what are people saying about you? What conclusions do you think they get? Is your life consistent with a direction that points people to Jesus? that they will follow your way, even when the way is hard at times. Hmm. Here's where I get myself in extra trouble here. I want to dispatch, I want to block out some thoughts about all the wonderful things that Jesus said and the truth of some things he said. Now someone said to me recently, God knows my heart. He knows my heart. He does. He does. Listen to the words of this Jesus the Christ. Not the Jesus that we create in our minds, but the Jesus, the Son of the living God. Watch his words in Matthew 10, 32. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. 
But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. That's easy. That's easy to swallow, isn't it? You hear people say, I will never deny him. Oh, yes. Watch this part right here. The same Jesus, the same Son of God, says, think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Same Jesus. Matthew 18, 19 to 22. A certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That sounds so good. Lord, I'm going to follow you wherever you go, Lord. <laughs> there was a song in the 90s, a gospel song, a Christian song. It was made by about five, six different artists back then. And the title was simply, I'll Go. And people were singing it all over the place, I'll go, I'll go. And you would hear them in churches, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do. Lord, I'll go where you tell me to go. Lord, I'll go. And Jesus said unto them, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. 21. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord. Let me go back because I think you missed the key word. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me. And let the dead bury their dead. Same Jesus. Same Jesus. He didn't change. Just some people's thoughts of him changed. Some people go blind to the full scripture. They take parts out of it. Matthew 15, 24 to 28. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's talking to a woman who's begging for help. He's telling her, I didn't come for everybody. Not right now. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord... She worshipped him. That changed his attitude. But she worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Same Jesus. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then said Jesus, answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Let me throw one more out there. Luke 17, 32, 36. Jesus says, remember Lot's wife? Remember Lot's wife? He said, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Just for the sake of reading and understanding, he's talking about two people in one place. He's not talking about what modern, modern thinking is. He's talking about two people in one place. How do we know that? Because he says right here, two, two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Same Jesus. Let me prepare for closing. I'm not going to give you the number, right? <laughs> I see the way he looked at me. People of the way forgive. People of the way forgive. Church folks don't. People of the way forgive. The people of the way were able to forgive because Jesus forgave. Father, forgive them. One of the examples is Deacon Stephen, who forgave in Acts 760. He forgave while he was being killed. He forgave while he's being killed. But let me give you this key on forgiveness. 
Forgiveness is not about keeping score. It's about losing count. People of the way, not only do they forgive, but people of the way have faith. They have faith in whom Jesus is. He's the son of the living God. They have faith in what they're called to do. Go make disciples while they give the gospel to the world. He says, go. He didn't say, sit still. He says, go. And what God has in store for them, a crown of life. When this life is over, no matter how it ends for them, people of the way had faith in that crown. People of the way, you're going you're gonna to probably not believe this. You're going to have such a disappointment. But people of the way have flaws. Church folks don't. Church folks don't. Church, church folks can see the flaws in your life. They can point them out. In fact, they can sit down with a detective and give details of your flaws if they needed to. Church folks don't have flaws. People of the way have flaws. <laughs> the men who were fearful, they were afraid of Saul. They were men who lacked understanding. They were men who made mistakes. Men who went the wrong direction. They were men who depended on the Holy Spirit for everything. The flaws of a servant is that he's not in control, but that the servant serves, which makes the strength of the servant is that the servant serves. If you're going to be a servant, serve. I've never seen a servant in a restaurant decide I'm not bringing you your food. You ordered it. In fact, I don't like you. I'm not bringing you your food. <laughs> and when you're done eating, I'm not taking the check. I don't even want your tip. A servant serves. They know when they accept the job, they know what they're, they're up against. They're up against picky eaters who look down at that steak and says, it's not meeting well, take it back. Yeah. They know what they're up against. But yet still they do it. I'm reading this book right now called, uh, let's see if I get this, this right. It was recommended to me and I started reading it and it's fascinating. I didn't think I would like it. It's called The, the Wonderful Calling I Have. These two pastors wrote this book. Uh, so if I get their names right. Martin Coppers, Coppersby and Lillian Daniel. They wrote this book. And in this book, he writes that they went to stay with a monastery. And if you know much about a monastery, no one talks all week long. They have a, they have a, 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 they swear to silence. Can you imagine if I was in a monastery? No. <laughs> that wouldn't even last like two hours. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> You know, when I was in the military, when they said be quiet, you know I got in trouble. <laughs> they swear for, but they only talk for one hour a week. They come to a meeting. And I think this is funny. I remember reading this before, but I think this is funny. How are you going to meet about silence all week? No one talks. So what are you going to meet about? But they do it every week. And he says when they were leaving, there were four other pastors with them, and they sat down, they talked, 
Oh, I got to back up one. Sorry, I don't miss this part. But I think it's why they had this conversation. One guy says, you know what I really want to the other pastors? He says, what? Let's sneak out and get a pizza and a beer. <laughs> they snuck out. They found a place. And they got a pizza and beer. And they sat there talking. And they realized that the flaws that they had in life, some of them said, I can't do this. My flaws are too great. They were honest with themselves. They had beer memory. They began to go over their life with each other and talk about it. And they were honest enough to say, you know what, I can't do this. And I believe from the, from the book, three out of the five dropped out. Then it comes to Lillian, who her first assignment, which I think is hilarious, her first assignment, she doesn't get sent to a, a small church. She doesn't get sent to work at the prison. She gets sent to the mental health board. I'm, I'm being nice. I don't know what floor it is here, but it used to be floor, floor seven. They sent her to the seventh floor. And she, she tells a story that there was a lady who says that when she got to preach, and she was telling them that she's just a student. And they said to her, why are you not a pastor? She says, well, I'm, I'm in training. So one lady says to her, can we stop this? And can we just pray to Princess Grace? And she says, we can pray for Princess Grace, but we can't pray to Princess Grace. She says, no, I think we need to pray to Princess Grace. And they spent an hour, she was young, she spent an hour going back and forth with this woman about praying to Princess Grace. How many of you would have said from the very beginning, this conversation has to end right here? Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. Something I learned years ago, and y'all going to get me for this one. Larry, this is a free one, Larry. This is free. Someone told me years ago, never argue with a fool. Because people watching won't know who is who. <laughs> He's arguing, she's arguing with this woman about praying to Princess Grace. So she goes back to her superior and says to her superior, I want to wear a collar. And she says, well, wearing a collar won't make you a pastor. She says, no, they'll respect me more if I wear a collar. So she says, okay, go out and get you a clergy collar. She says, I know it's, I know it's, it, 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 it's not right to put on a collar when you didn't earn it yet, but I want to wear a collar. She goes out, she gets the collar, she comes back, and she runs into the Princess Grace lady again. And she says to her, are you a pastor yet? She says, no, not yet. Princess Grace lady says to her, then why are you wearing a collar? The opposition that you are going to face while you're serving. If we took some time and, and asked all of you about all the years and time of your service, I bet you have some stories. I bet you could be like me sometimes and say, man, I just need some brown liquor and I'll be all right for the night. <laughs> At least I'm honest. We may not do it, but sometimes we say, man, I need a brown liquor moment. If you, my dad would say to me, if you look in the mirror and say to the mirror, how would I pastor a person like you? I need a brown liquor. <laughs> People of the way have flaws. Closing. Can you keep the way? Is it two? But I have until 5.30. The game doesn't come on at 5.30. <laughs> there you go. Somebody said, take your time.
closing. Can you keep the way? Jesus said, I'm the way. Can you keep the way? Even in difficult moments with difficult crowds. Just imagine a comedian trying to do comedy and everyone looks like they're sucking on the lemon. Can you keep the way? When things are not favorable for you, can you keep the way? I'm not talking about being a churchgoer. I'm not talking about church folks. Can you keep the way? Can you, can you surrender to Jesus even when you don't understand? Can you surrender to Holy Spirit even when you don't feel like it? Can you surrender to the Father even as the prodigal son realized that it's better to be a servant of Father than on the outside of Father's house? If you're not going to be Christ-like, then keep the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Keep his way. Follow his way. Maybe being Christian is too hard. Follow his way. Follow him. Because then you'll find a way to the Father's heart. Amen. When you're sitting there waiting for that lobster, steak, and caviar to come to your table, when that servant brings that to you, it's worthwhile waiting for, isn't it? You sit there, you're grumbling and complaining. No one in here eats steak, lobster, and caviar? No. Am I the only one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> am I, Pastor Bailey, am I the only one? <laughs> when you're waiting for that catfish, am I reaching still? Reaching? Now I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know when you order that food and you're waiting for it and you see everybody else get theirs and you're smelling it smells so good and it makes you get a little upset because you're like where's mine you're watching your watch and watching am I the only one who did that the guy the after you, he's already served. everybody served but you and yeah. your stomach is growling and you're smelling it and, and you just want to go over and get somebody a piece of chicken off their plate yeah. <laughs> even when you're first in line and everyone behind you got served first <laughs> absolutely let me interpret it for y'all, since y'all missed her interpretation. She said amen. <laughs> when you finally get your plate, you forget sometimes the servant. Because you have what you've been looking for. Keep serving God. Amen. Keep serving God. Don't let anybody turn you away from serving God. You're going to have some difficult folks. You're going to have some folks come to Burger King, talk about steak caviar. Go to Wendy's and ask them for a Big Mac. You're going to have some difficult people. But you keep serving. Because Jesus is the way. The more they find out who Jesus is, the happier their life is going to be. Amen. If you're not going to be Christ-like, Keep the way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today, God. We pray, Lord, that you would bless the hearts, the minds of your people, that we can keep the way. We can keep, Lord, what you've called us to do, serve you. We serve you, Lord, by serving others. Not I, but thine will be done. El Señor Torpuroso está con nosotros. Jesucristo, no hay nada como tú. Espíritu Santo, tú eres bienvenido aquí en esta iglesia, la iglesia. Yo soy el camino, la verdad y la vida. En nombre de Jesús. Amén.